Hello ladies and gentlemen, i um, showing you a nice little video on how to download Eclipse properly on your home PC or computer. Uh, if you have a Mac, the instructions are going to be very similar. You just have to click the Mac downloads instead of the Windows versions. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to my folder that's called IDE download links. There is one that's directly to Eclipse. You will need to click on the link one time. It should take you to another page, but we will need to click on the link at the top again and it will bring us directly to where we need to go. We are going to be downloading for today the e Oxygen uh, version of Eclipse. And I know the one at school is technically Kepler, uh, but the, for us, the thing is, it's going to be exactly the same pro uh, of what we need it to actually do. So uh, it doesn't matter necessarily the version. I always like to get the most up-to-date versions of anything that I download. That way we know we're in the safest environment possible. So once this thing downloads, this one's usually nice and quick. We're going to try and open this thing up really quickly, and uh-oh, it yells at us. This is, the set, this is the part that I said is a little different with Eclipse. We're going to have to download something else on our computer. So here it says the required 64-bit Java, yours might say 32-bit. Uh, basically, it requires what was called a virtual machine. You might remember that when we uh, were using BlueJay and we had a program running, we had to reset the virtual machine. So Eclipse needs us to download a separate one. It says, do you want to browse your system for it? No, we don't have it in our system yet. So when you click no, it should bring us to a separate page. It says, you need to download this stuff then. Okay, we've already downloaded Eclipse, that's good to go. But if you come down to the bottom, these are the four files that we will need to look at and decide which ones we want to download. So what we're looking for is it says, you can download the JRE, which is the Java Runtime Environment. Or what I suggest doing is downloading the Java Development Kit. That's basically all those packages in one. I'm going to download the latest version of this so you can see that I'm going to download the Oracle JDK 1.8. Should bring us to this page where we've got about a million options to choose from. We're going to stick with this very first uh, tile or tile, this first section up here. First thing that you need to do is you need to accept the license agreement. And then if you are a Mac user, you will be downloading this version right here, I believe. Not 100%. So if that doesn't work, please let me know and I can fix this video. Uh, for Windows users, even though this says Windows 86, this is technically the 32-bit version, whereas the Windows 64 will be the 64-bit version. So I'm going to download this one right now. Um, what uh, Random facts of the day for you guys. Um, .exe files, whenever you see this, those are installation files, files that are actually going to install something on your computer. Um, some people want to know what the difference between a 32-bit and a 64-bit file or processor is. Basically, it's the, if you know very much about binary, it is the number of ones and zeros that it can uh, read at any given point in time. So a 32-bit processor uh, can read 32 zeros and ones that it stores randomly for you guys, uh, whereas a 64-bit processor can store 64 of them. So this thing is going to download. You can go ahead and try to click on this to open it, but it's actually not going to open anything. The JDK file itself is not something that's runnable. It's something that we need to use in order to run our Eclipse. So once you download it, you're downloaded it. That's all that it really needs to do. So you can minimize this file, go back to where we started. Now, what we need to do now is we downloaded the Eclipse file before this. That is the file that we need to open again. Couple ways to get there. If you have Windows 10, Cortana is awesome. You can just type Eclipse into the search bar. And you can see that it will have this file right here that we can go ahead and download. Or if that doesn't work for you guys, um, just remember that your file explorer is how we can access everything on our computers. If you just downloaded something, it will always go into the automatic downloads folder. So if you pop that open, the first two things you see here, I tried to download this one a little bit earlier as well, but you should have your JDK is what we have downloaded. And then you should have this where we say we've downloaded Eclipse. This is the installer again. And that's awesome because you can always see on the right side here, those .exes, they're applications that are being installed on our computers. So I'm going to click on this one. You should only have one there anyways, should read exactly the same. But we're going to go ahead and open this up now You can close out your other files. This is going to give us now the starting process for downloading our Eclipse files that we actually need to. So it's going to run our installer for us, and we're going to have a few more options that we're going to have to choose from here. So this is typically the lengthier part of the download. Um, we need to figure out which one to download, and then it takes probably about a minute to do that. 
here we go. We got options for us. Um, again, they give us a million different things to download. We really don't care which one we do. So I'm just going to click on the very first one. We are Java developers. Um, the installation folder that you would like to use, make sure that this is on your computer. So for me, it is going into my C drive. I am the user, C Nichols. It's making an Eclipse folder for me, and this is going to download to Java Oxygen 2. I believe that's two, mainly because I have one already uh, on my folder. I deleted it, though. Uh, but here you get to choose. Do you want a start menu? Do you want a desktop? I personally don't want it in my start menu, but again, that's up to you guys for what you are doing. This is the process that is going to take a little bit. So this installation uh, situation, at least in my computer, has taken approximately two to four minutes, depending on how fast it goes for you guys. Um, not too sure there, but it looks like we're actually going at a pretty nice rate for right here. Surprise. I always like to judge the rate whenever it stops. I always like to sit my cursor right here and I'm like, all right, what's the next thing that's going to install for me? Once it moves past that point, I know we're making some good progress. So look at that. We're cruising. Come on, a little bit more. You can do it. Yeah. Boom. It should have successfully completed. At this point in time, if you've selected for it to create a desktop shortcut, it pops up there. You can click launch right out of this and it should go ahead and launch the Eclipse version of this. You can see this was updated last month. So we have the most up to date Eclipse version that we could possibly download, which is always what we want. There's one more thing I need to show you guys and it's this right here. Every time you open up Eclipse and you kind of remember this from class, we need to tell it where to put our files. Never put this on a Google Drive folder. So sometimes we can have Google Drive accessible on our PCs. I tried that last year. It does not work how we want it to. So you unfortunately, unfortunately are going to have to put these files directly on your computers. Some students are trying to make this so that it accesses their USB drive right away. I highly suggest not doing that because you would need your USB drive at all times plugged into the computer for it to work. So here's where I suggest you guys can go ahead and browse if you want to put this anywhere specifically. Um, typically, like I said, what it does is it will go ahead and grab your account. It'll go into it. It typically has a, an Eclipse file and then an Eclipse workspace file. Uh, I will almost always put this in the workspace file. They do a very good job of organizing this. I always say use this as the default so it will never have to ask me again where this thing comes from. I have a separate video that I'm going to show you guys later of if your switch or if your workspaces accidentally get switched up, how we can transfer back and forth between them and so on and so forth. But this is how we can successfully open up our Eclipse files, download this onto our desktops or our PCs or the Macs, I believe. I'm not a Mac person, so you got to let me know if that comes any different. This now looks very familiar. We're going to close out of the welcome page. If you want to, oops, there we go. It's ours since I already have some of my files stored here. Um, you can see that I've got my unit twos in here. Good to go for all of this. So this is the file, the folder, or I'm sorry, the video for installing Eclipse onto your actual computer. I'll have a separate video for you guys about how to kind of go about and transfer your files back and forth and how to successfully create a, a project in Eclipse.